Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. In the previous videos, we looked into different parameters of classical logic like proposition, connectives, tautologies, contradiction, exclusive or and nor, and logical proofs. Next, we have to go through fuzzy logic parameters. But before we move on to those parameters, let us revisit the concept of implication as per lecture number 13 of our fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. In this video, we'll be looking into an important portion in implication. So let's get started. We have learned that the implication operation P implies Q is also understood or taken as if P then Q. However, in the previous lecture, we had seen the case where propositions P and Q are defined for only a single universe. Now in this lecture, we will see the case where P and Q are going to be defined for two different universes. So consider P as a proposition described by a set A which is defined on universe X and Q is a proposition described by a set B and this is defined in a universe Y. That is, P is a proposition defined such that an element X belongs to a set A and A is a subset of universe X and Q is a proposition such that an element Y belongs to set B and B is a subset of universe Y. In this case, the implication P implies Q can be represented in the form of a set by a relation R and the relation R is defined as R is equal to A cross B union A bar cross Y. And this implication is equivalent to the linguistic rule form if A then B. That is, if an element X belongs to a set A where X belongs to capital X which is a universe X and A is a subset of universe X. Then we can say that an element Y belongs to set B where Y belongs to capital Y which is universe Y and B is a subset of universe Y. Now consider a compound proposition expressed in a linguistic form as if P then Q else S where a proposition P is defined as an element X where X belongs to set A and A is a subset of universe X and Q proposition is defined as an element Y where Y belongs to set B and B is a subset of universe Y and lastly we have a proposition S which is defined by an element Y that belongs to set B and B is a subset of Y. Now just like before the P proposition is defined in universe X and both Q and S propositions are defined in universe Y. Now we can linguistically represent this statement as if P then Q and if not P that is P negation then S. And if we write this statement in the form of an expression with connectives we'll get it as if P then Q can be written as P implies Q and we have conjunction if P bar then S can be written as P bar implies S. Now this expression can be represented in a set theoretic form by relation R and relation R is defined as R is equal to A cross B union A bar cross C. I understand that this concept might be a little bit difficult to grasp so let's take an example to understand how this works. The question given to us here is suppose we have two universes for a thermistor problem. We have a universe X and a universe Y where universe X is a universe of temperatures and universe Y is a universe of resistances and these are described by a collection of elements as 1, 2, 3 are elements of universe X and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are elements of universe Y. Now a crisp set A is defined on universe X and a crisp set B is defined on universe Y. That is A is defined on universe X and it has elements as 1 and 3 and B is a set that is defined in universe Y and it has elements as 2, 4 and 5. Now the inference given in this question is if A then B. Now for those of you who don't know what a thermistor is, a thermistor is a resistance thermometer whose resistance is dependent upon the temperature. 
So when we say the inference if A then B, then what we mean is if temperature is A, then the resistance is B. And it will give a matrix describing the membership values of a relation R by using the equation R is equal to A cross B union A bar cross Y. Or we can say that the matrix R, it represents the rule if A then B. Now let's write the crisp sets A and B in ZA's notation. For those of you who don't know what ZA's notation is, please refer lecture 1 of our fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. So to express in ZA's notation, first let's write the crisp set A. We have A. Now since A is defined on universe X, the denominator of A will have all the elements of X. That is we have 1, 2 and 3. Now to distinguish and list out the elements, we will use the plus operator. And a very important thing to note here is that the plus operator does not perform the actual addition. All it does over here is to distinguish or list out the elements. It does not perform the addition operation. Then we first check for element 1. Now since 1 belongs to set A, it will have a membership value of 1. Similarly, 3 element is also belonging to set A and therefore it will also have a membership value equal to 1. Now since 2 does not belong to set A, its membership value will be 0. So this is how you express in ZA's notation. Similarly, let's do for the B set as well. So we have B and first we list out all the elements of universe Y. That is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Then we are going to distinguish with the help of the plus operator. Then since 2, 4 and 5 belong in set B or are present in set B, it will all have the membership value equal to 1. Whereas 1 and 3 since it is not present in set B, it will have a membership value equal to 0. So as per our relation, we have to first perform the Cartesian product of A and B, that is A cross B. For those of you who don't remember how to do the crisp Cartesian product, please refer lecture 2 of our fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. So we have A cross B is equal to this. Now that we have obtained A cross B, let us find out the Cartesian product of A bar and Y. Now to find out A bar, that is A negation, we have to take the negation of A. So to take the negation, we have to take the opposite of the membership values. That is wherever we have 1 as the membership value, it will be 0 and wherever we have 0, it will be 1. So we have A bar which will be equal to 0, 1 plus 1, 2 plus 0 and 3. We should also express the universe Y in ZDS notation. So we have Y. First list down all the elements of Y that is we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And since all these elements belong to universe Y, all of them will have a membership value equal to 1. So we have A bar cross Y which is equal to this. Now that we have found out the Cartesian product of A and B and A bar and Y, we can substitute it into the relation R with the help of the union operation. So we have R which is equal to, first we write down the elements of universe X that is 1, 2 and 3. Then we write down the elements of universe Y which is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And then we have to perform the union operation. And we know that union operation is to take the maximum of all the elements. So maximum of 0 and 0 will be 0. Maximum of 1 and 0 will be 1. 0 and 0 will be 0. Maximum of 1 and 0 will be 1. And maximum of 1 and 0 will be 1. Similarly, 
Now, as I've said before, the rows that is 1, 2 and 3 are the temperatures as given by universe X and the columns that is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 are the resistances as given by universe Y. Now, if a given temperature is 1, then we should get a single resistance value for that given temperature. That is, only one of the elements in this row should have a membership value equal to 1. But as you can see here, we have a membership value of 1 at resistances 2, 4 and 5. Now this can be interpreted or understood as for a given temperature, the thermistor will have a resistance value of 2, 4 and 5 simultaneously. Now this creates an ambiguity which does not happen in real life. But it has occurred over here because we are using classical logic and we know that classical logic is not suitable for modeling real life scenarios. Moreover, I have also taken the values of the universe that is x and y values as random. So this will also contribute to the problem. That is why we generally use fuzzy logic when it comes to such problems as we get different membership values apart from 0 and 1. To give you a glimpse as to what I have just said, let us consider the same matrix R but now it is defined by using fuzzy logic and thus having different membership values. For a given temperature 1, we can see that the thermistor has a 10% chance to have a resistance 2, it has a 40% chance to have a resistance 3, a 90% chance to have a resistance 4 and a 40% chance for the thermistor to have a resistance 5. Thus, you can see how fuzzy logic can overcome such ambiguities as we have faced with classical logic and thus it can model the real life scenario in a much more fluid manner. We'll study much more about this in detail in the coming lectures. So coming back to our problem, we hence obtain the full relation R describing the implication if A then B. Suppose a question given to us has an inference as if A then B L C, where C is a crisp set defined on universe Y having elements as 1 and 4, then the inference if A then B L C will give a relational matrix as per the equation R is equal to A cross B union A bar cross C. So first we express C in ZA's notation. So we have C is equal to Next, we have to find out what is A cross B. And since we have already found out what is A cross B, we can directly write it down. So we have A cross B, that is Cartesian product of A and B. Then we have to find out what is the Cartesian product of A bar and C. So we have A bar cross C is equal to this. Therefore, we have found out A cross B and A bar cross C. So let us substitute it in the relation R with the union operation. So we have R which is equal to 1, 2 and 3 that is elements of universe X and 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 that is elements of universe Y and again take the maximum. So we get it as hence this becomes a relation R describing the implication if A, then B, L, C. I hope you all understood the concepts that were taught in this lecture today. If anyone has any doubts, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Either we or another viewer will surely help you out. If you found this video to be useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next lecture, we will be studying about the different parameters in fuzzy logic. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.